I want to go over how to hand graph a polar graph. So I'm going to graph r squared equals 4 sine 2 theta. Now the first thing is if you look at the chart in your book, you should know this is this lemonesque, um, it, don't worry, I can't pronounce it either. If you can pronounce it, uh, points to you. It's going to look something like, if you look at this, it's going to look something like this. It's this sideways thing, and the sign are on this diagonal. Having that already in your head is useful as you go to graph this. Now, what I would do is you want to pick, you're going to pick your theta. It usually helps, though, to then pick, figure out what sine 2 theta is in this case, or whatever this actual function is and then figure out your r. In our case, because this is squared, I need the square root of 4 sine 2 theta. I didn't do a very good job of uh, giving myself room there. So I'm going to go, yeah, well, okay. So square root of 4 sine theta. So, for instance, 0. Well, this is then sine 0, which is 0. So then this is r equals the square root of 0, which is 0. That was super duper exciting. But now, OK, if I put in pi over 4, well, this is really then sine pi over 2, which is 1. So this is r equals the square root of 4 times 1, so 4, so plus or minus 2. OK? And then so we could put in. pi over 2, which is then sine pi, which is 0, and I'm back to that unexciting 0. Now, what if I put in 3 pi over 4? Well, then I'm going to get sine 3 pi over 2, which is negative 1. Well, can I do that? No, not real. Okay, so I'm not going to have anything. And if you look back up here at my kind of hidden there, we remember we're going to only have it in two quadrants. Well, that's what this is telling us as we go through and do this. And so I can keep doing this. At pi, I'm going to be back to 0 again because um, sine of 2 pi is 0. Okay, and then if I put in 5 pi over 4, I'm going to get sine 5 pi over 2, which is, again, a negative. It's the negative square root of 2 over 2. So, again, not real. Um, and the same is going to keep happening to me. The values that I can get is I can go back to that first quadrant and say if I put in pi over 6, I want to be different, then I'm going to get sine pi over 3, which is the square root of 3 over 2, which is about 0.9. And this is going to give me r equals the square root of 4 times 0.9, or approximately plus or minus 1.9. You can obviously check that on your calculator if you don't trust me. Um, so first thing to do is make a list of values. And when you do these, we're used to simply building like an xy chart, and there's only two pieces. It is usually easier to build these in chunks. You're going to pick your theta, but then do the trig function, whether it's sine or cosine, um, it's 2 theta or whatever it is, figure that out, and then figure out the r. In this case, we also have to do the square root. Okay, now I need another page, and it's going to put it up here just to be... If I would have thought ahead, I would have done this ahead of time, but I didn't, so. Okay, so give myself some more. So now I want to start drawing this. So as I draw this, so obviously um, 0, 0 is really easy to draw there in the middle. I, I, I can even manage that one. So now the first one, okay, I have this pi over 4, and here's 2, and here's 2. So I'm going up. Here's this. I've gone up pi over 4, and I'm out on this little line here, 2. Okay? This is the positive version. The negative version goes out 
this way. So it comes out, here's my 2 and my 2, because remember these are all positive. And over here it goes in the opposite direction. I'm still at pi over 4, but now I'm going in the opposite direction. And that gives me my second value. Then I had 1.9. So, okay, and that was pi over 6. So pi over 6, 1.9, and then I come out, there's my 1.9, and I'm going to start drawing in my values, and I'm going to get my curve. And obviously you can draw in as many points as you need, but by knowing already the shape, you'll know where to fill in the grass. But that's how we're getting those two opposites. We're actually only getting values over here in the first quadrant. Those are the only angles we're getting to work. But then we're also getting the negative versions, which are going to go in that opposite direction and give us the second half. So this is how you hand graph it. When you graph it on the trick assignment, I expect to see your chart written out with the different values. And then I want to see the hand-drawn graph where you filled in the various rays um, and R theta points.